Hello, water signs. So this will be your reading for the month of November, November 2021. And so we will be reading Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. I will have timestamps in the description. And we will see what's coming ahead for you for this month, right? Okay, so we will jump right into Pisces. And so this is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Also, if you're dealing with the Pisces and you're watching the Crosswatcher, this message might actually make more sense to you. Okay. Perfect. Ah, uh, move. Okay. There's definitely some energy that could have been stuck, stagnant for some time, maybe like locked in the chakras. Could have been from a lack of physical movement, but we'll see what's going on with this because it does feel more moving than need to move. But let's grab some cards to support this. Let's get four cards. Okay, wow, all four came out at once. I can't even, that's so funny. Okay, all right. <laughs> yep, there's the balance, restoring the faith. Yep, okay, I like this. Yeah, light, look at that. The light at the end of the tunnel, that makes sense. Ooh, we've got three majors out. These do relate with tarot. Okay, there's another uh, seven, stand your ground, love it. Two sevens, and there's the sacral chakra. So that's probably where the energy's been locked, okay. So that's what it feels because I was like, ah, something's been stuck, stagnant, like can't breathe, can't move energetically, right? And I was like, it's locked in the chakra. So we get the chakra card, the sacral chakra. So that governs our relationships, our sexuality, stuff like that. I feel like it's more governed around partnerships, could be family, but definitely people. It's more like a relationship pattern. So whatever it is, it's kind of been stuck. Things have not been progressing forward or it could have been holding you back. Like that person could have been holding you back. Whatever it is, there hasn't been a change. So maybe you've been stuck in an old pattern, stuck in an old belief, but it's definitely involved around another person or people, some kind of relationship here, right? And so here's the thing. Whatever's not been moving forward, it does feel, it feels like this is going to be unblocked, right? The sacral chakra is kind of opening and I want to highlight opening because it's shifting, okay? Releasing some of the old and moving into more of the light, um, more of a paradigm that fits you better at this time. Like it's, uh, uh, I don't want to say it's all the way like you're shifting timelines, but it's like you were on one and you're progressing forward and then you got stuck and it kind of like held you back. So it's kind of bringing you back to where you were so you can keep going on that timeline because you kind of like took a standstill pause. Okay. So balance is definitely being restored, but it does feel rather like faith-based um so whatever that faith that's lacking or i'm not sure if it's faith in yourself faith in humanity faith in faith in spirituality the collective something but it feels more energetically connected so you be, could be connected back to your spiritual side but again um you definitely overcome this i mean we've got the two sevens right and that's why i feel like it's on the spiritual side because spirit sevens are very uh very high spiritual number and so that's why I was like, maybe we're releasing this energetic stuff to align you back spiritually. But this could be a spiritual belief that's um, causing you to move forward. Could be writing some new belief systems, right? Could be studying some law of attraction. But this is like the finally, whatever we've been stuck and stagnant on, it's finally moving forward. Wow. Okay. Wow, Pisces, that was like such a quick read. Normally mine like go on for like a half hour. I feel that's all I'm picking up on from spirit. But you know what? Sometimes short and sweet and very direct to the point can actually be more powerful than like whole long winded me rambling for 30 minutes. But yeah, that's just what I feel like things are moving forward for you in a great direction. But it's definitely energetically like that stuck stagnant energy that's been locked in the chakra. All right, so we will move on to Cancer. Let's deck a couple quick shuffles. I don't think I've ever done a reading that short in the history of my life. Wow, that's so funny. Okay. All right, so this is for Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Also, if you're dealing with the Cancer and you're watching, the Crosswatch of the message might make more sense for you. Let's see what we got. Okay. Okay, clarity of belief. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen that card. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Just breathe. Okay, okay. I'm really pulled to the numbers, like adding them together and not adding them together to make a five with numerology, more like the one and the four make the 14th. It feels like a key date for you. Um, could be a turning pattern. 
Yeah, it might be a uh, clarity of belief. Interesting. We were just talking about belief systems with Pisces, and this comes out too, right? But even as I was shuffling, I was like, wow, is this more highlighted for like, um, I'm sure, there's probably messages in here for sun signs, but I was like, moon, or even rising. So you might have some Pisces placement. Um, or maybe Pisces has some cancer placement. But that's interesting because this is a whole new belief in being written. Let's see. Let's get four um, surrounding cards so we can see what else is going on. Okay, just one more. Okay, so I saw one of them flip up, and it's another air sign because the blue ones do relate with the swords, which is air. So it could be dealing with Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but also since these are the swords, that is more mental energy and tougher lessons. So already having three pop out. Okay, and there's the five. There's the change. Look at that. So one and four do equal five. However, so this is financial material changes. Let's see. There's the other one. I told you the other sword. So we've got six of swords. There's the moving on. It's really about letting go. But it's definitely also around this belief, right? Ah, there it is. Seeing the truth. Third eye chakra. Two sixes. Four, five, six, six. Sorry. If you guys watch my channel, you know me and um uh you know me in numbers. Wow. And there's the other four. That's so interesting. Four, four five six six but how do i even feel you get there you go back to the beginning i want to say go back to basics clarity belief okay so if you have a belief that's not um serving you or serving your highest good anymore it's definitely time to do that but honestly like i see you at the drawing board like you're racing all of the beliefs now do i think that's literally what you're doing no but that's what spirit's showing me as an image so what i feel with that is go back to basics go back to the beginning what used to work right don't fix what's not broken so if you had a belief system or a set of systems set up set of principles, a set of practices, a set of spiritual things that you were doing to keep you in alignment, that type of energy, whatever it was, it worked. It worked, it worked, it worked, it worked to a point that you would say it didn't work anymore. So maybe at that point there was some change needed. Um, hold on, I'm trying to process something. I can't see where the shift is. What the image they're showing me, it's like a, a railroad shack, but it's like, like split, like, um, it's it's connected like this and then all of a sudden they're showing me this gap right and so i can't see what happened here when it worked to where you're going over here where it's going to work again because i'm like what made it stop working whatever you're doing it's here i'll give you the example so let's talk about it like spiritual practices let's say you used to um do yoga every day and it kept you in great alignment right kept you in physical health kept the mind body spirit as one clarity of thought belief in yourself it was like a good spiritual practice and then you stopped. And so, the, you know, here's where it worked. You're on one train track. And then there's this period of time you hop over and things are out of balance. Things are out of whack. Things aren't in flow anymore. And so we want to get the train tracks back right together. So how do we do that? We have to go back to what worked. Was it yoga? Maybe for some of you it could be meditation. Maybe it's running. Maybe it's jogging. Maybe it's working out. Maybe it's just journaling, right? Maybe it's bubble bath. Something that, it's something, like, a, a, it's probably more a self-care practice, but somehow spiritual wow, spirituality is wrapped in it. So don't fix what was broken. If you're at a place where you feel a little disconnected, feel a little lost, feel a little, like, not in alignment where you used to be, feels like we're going to go back and revisit the past, meaning that that train track, this one over here, right? We want to jump back on that train track, jump back over there, because there's a gap. I'm telling you, they keep showing me that image. It's like a broken train track. So why is there this huge gap in time? I'm assuming whatever was in the middle is what we have to fill it back in with. So maybe you stop journaling. Maybe you stop going for walks in nature. Maybe you stop that yoga. Whatever it is, it'll be different for all of you since these are general. However, whatever that chunk is, that's why there's the gap. You stop something. Consistency is key. So going back to the drawing board, like I showed me, like I said, they showed me a whiteboard being um, like washed away. But it, we don't need to go back and like rewrite um, history or like try to fix things you had something that worked we just need to bring that back right so whatever it was it's almost brought you like this mind body spirit connection because i'm like we were in alignment there right so why am i not in alignment now well don't fix what's not broken don't try to change everything don't try to, what did they say change the wheel something like that right we don't need to rewrite something um but it, but it all we just go back to what works right and go back to basics sometimes it's just taking some deep breaths and like concentrating on your your breath when like if you're in meditation you're trying to quiet the mind sometimes that's what we have to do so we have to go back to what worked at one point oh interesting i swear i wasn't even looking down at the card so right now and i just said just breathe because that's what like sometimes concentrating the breath will help us through meditation but we just have to just breathe as we go through it so for some of you well, let's use that example remember how i said with yoga let's say some of you stopped meditating that was your thing and i meditated every day and i was such an alignment and i had clarity and thought right 
And then um, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can't even meditate one minute, five minutes. I used to be able to meditate 10, 15, 20 minutes. Just concentrate on your breath. Just breathe, just breathe. Whatever it is, this too will pass. You're going to get back in line. Just breathe whatever it is and get yourself there. Baby steps. Start at five minutes and add a minute every time. Or if you have to start at one minute until you get yourself back up, build it back up, okay? Um, Let me get a sip of this water really quick because... It's interesting, the moving moving on card actually to me is like going back to basics, moving back, going back to the beginning. That's how we start over. And it's interesting because we do have the four. Well, we have two fours, a five, and two sixes. How do we get there? Like I said, going back to the beginning, what worked. So that's what the moving on is. Yeah, this is that spiritual connection. That's why I was like, is a spiritual practice? What did we used to do? And that's why I was giving like the yoga meditation analogies because there's something spiritual here. But this, I think, is the alignment card because even though it says financial and material change, Ah, look at all the lines. We want to get them in alignment, right? We were once almost in alignment, and then we started swerving off, but we want to get them back going straight, right? But fives do bring change, and there's the material and financial changes that can come with, but first you have to bring yourself back to center. Oh, yeah, there's the root chakra, firm foundations. Look at that. Going back to the basics. What worked? Let's go back to what worked. Literally grounding exercise, breathing exercise, whatever it is, going back. Root chakra, your center, your core, your foundation. Go back to there and just breathe and you'll get through this. And I feel like once you do that, the clarity and thought will help you on this. Give you the belief in yourself that you're needing. That you're needing because it might be a little bit in lack right now, okay? Okay. All right. All right, Cancer. We will wrap up your reading. Okay. All right. So. here all right let me give this a shuffle and we will move on to scorpio all right okay all right so this will be for scorpio sun moon or rising also, if you're dealing with a Scorpio and you're watching, wow, that one is fly right out. <laughs> if you're dealing with a Scorpio and you're watching, the cross washer, this message might actually make more sense for you. All right, so let, uh, oh, interesting, love. <laughs> I was about to say let love in, but I think that might be the major theme of right now, right? So let's get four surrounding cards for Scorpio for the month of November. There it is. Wow. Okay, perfect. Emotional withdrawal. Eight. You need to go within, find the answers, build up the self-love. There it is. Memories of love, another six. Look at that. Harmony, union, balance. Oh, patience. Okay. Yeah, let me get one more. Wow, there's a collective energy attached to this. Let's get one last card for Scorpio. Okay, or three. Wow, fine. We'll take them as one placement. There you go. Mental challenges. That's letting go with love, though. Wow, another conflict in, in defeat. We've got two of swords, five of swords popping out right next. We had so much love energy coming in here. Two sixes with the, with the harmony, the, the water, all the emotions right there. And then a major. Okay, there we go. Patience and planning. We're ending with a seven. Interesting. This feels like a hop, skip, jump. It feels like a, uh, what is that? Like a match, like tit for tat i see energy going back and forth like a ball that sounds like it's competitive is it is what what is that let's start here right i'm gonna end with that um let me go one more step okay so going within to find the answers okay whatever that has been bothersome to you worrying maybe keeping you up at night could be about somebody else they could be rent some whatever's renting space in your head. Um, whatever this external factor is, we're going to let it go with love because it's interesting. Some of you could be harboring onto some anger or some maybe sadness, might be some grief, might be some sorrow, something along those lines around somebody else, right? It might be about a heartbreak, okay? So here's the thing. If you're getting out of a relationship or you're spent out of one, but you're still grieving that, it's that type of energy. Again, you could be mourning the loss of somebody. There's some kind of sorrow, heartbreak around it, right? Whatever it is. But again, it's interesting because as much as my heart feels like it's broken, there's a lot of anger towards this person, right? And so you might be harboring onto some resentments or something with them, okay? It does feel like some time has passed, though, 
Okay, if you're at the very beginning stage of a, the breakup, then I'm telling you this is where you're going. However, it, it feels like the energy when I'm tapping into, um, enough time has kind of passed, okay? But here's the thing, we are going to let go with love. If we're not there yet, this is the advice to let go with love because this is honestly going within, right? It says emotional withdrawal, but look at he's sitting there meditating with the water. Right, he's got the elements, he's sitting on the sound on the sand grounding, you got the wind, got the water, all that. And you're in this meditative with the uh, with like pranam. He's doing a freaking mudra. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, fairy, I'm going to go within to find the answers to, to heal the emotional withdrawal. And how do we do it? We do it with love. Remember to love somebody um, with compassion and gratitude and say, I learned something from this. I'm going to come from that loving place because here's the thing, as much as I felt the collective energy with this, it's honestly like, Oh God, I don't want to go too esoteric out there, but if you're, uh, I hope I, some of you will understand this. Maybe, maybe all of you, maybe not. I don't know. Um, it, <sighs> Healing yourself can help heal the world, right? We're all, how can I explain this really quick? Okay, we're all, we all come from the same source energy. You can call it God, you could call it the light, the universe source, whatever you want to say. But so when one person starts to ascend or heal, like we can help heal the other because we all are still energetically attached. Like we're technically like we're all soulmates because we all come from same source, right? Or God, you know, just we have different levels of soulmates and some are romantic some are like teachers some are just friends some are neighbors and so you can define them by different labels but we're all still energetically attached right because we're all part of the same source energy and so when one does the work it helps heal the collective okay so that's what i was kind of feeling with this that like you're only hurting yourself with this this anger this worry the sadness whatever it is but like you by letting go and forgiving and healing it's not only going to help the partnership between you and this ex um or whoever this other person is this partnership it's also going to help the next lover that's coming in it's also going to help the collective it felt like an overall like an all-encompassing universal energy like by i'm letting go with love and being connect compassionate right i'm choosing to rise above and be the bigger person and release with love and forgive and say i'm grateful like i learned some of this i'm gonna grow from this i'm not gonna repeat the same mistake anymore i'm gonna get off the karmic cycle i'm going to ascend i'm going to let this go with love that's what it feels like but again the more we let go with love the higher you ascend and um and move up the scale of consciousness and tap more into that collective energy and forgiveness and as you're healing yourself you're also helping healing the world that's what this kind of feels like i don't know if all of you guys will understand that but for the some that even do maybe even understand as a mental thought but you're not there emotionally because you're still like ah, angry or heartbroken i'm telling you it's all about forgiveness right because here's the thing if we don't learn that lesson that relationship we can attract that same type of energy with that same type of lesson <clears throat> in a new partner right and so it's a brand new person but then they end up doing the exact same things because there's a karmic lesson there so there's always something to learn so we don't repeat the karmic stuff anymore okay that's remembering them in love and light with grace and gratitude that no matter what happens i could oh look at it. it's like releasing it into the water i'm releasing you i'm releasing these ties and look at the ties that bind you right we're all binded. Look at the, the cords in between. But I'm releasing them with love and light because I'm choosing to be a bigger person. I'm choosing to stay in a grateful heart. I'm choosing to want to go up the scale of consciousness and evolve through the, the soul evolution. So I'm releasing it with love and light, okay? It's interesting because there's a double energy coming from this because this feels past with you, all that mental conflict, conflict and defeat. Honestly, the defeat card to me with you is saying is what you overcome and what you will defeat and this is what you're kind of getting out of though but it kind of feels like the other person is still in that head space but that's okay right there's no judgment so if somebody is still learning and growing evolving you know ah, that's why i was like you're gonna help them as well even that next person because i was like they're not in the best state either and so by you releasing them with love it's allowing them to help heal and process as well because they're still suffering as well so it, it not putting this on you but it's like the sooner you do it then the sooner they can um start to release and and they need to reconnect with their wives what it feels like they have they have a lot of stuff going on and that's fine again like no judgments but um 
it does help them along their path. And again, you're not held responsible for this. That's not what I'm saying. It's just a, a little bit like they have to do the real inner work. It's not like you can say, oh, I release you. And they're just going to match your level. They can't bypass, right? There's no, they're not going to spiritual bypass. They still have to do the real work, but they've got some tough challenges because they still are facing some obstacles. Okay. That's only just going to lighten the load a little bit. Again, it's not your burden. It's not your responsibility. Your focus needs to be on you releasing these energetic cords, staying in that higher vibrational state. Okay. Um, if you're worried about when the next relationship is, I wouldn't be worried about that. Things are happening right at the space they need to be and the speed that they're needing to be. There is that patience and planning, but I'm telling you, you are surrounded and protected with this energy. The good things are coming your way. It may not be now. It might be three months until you have your next relationship, but I'm telling you, there's a reason for this. This feels protected. I feel they're protecting you from something or they're preventing you from something. Or they're planning something out with you that like that three month key window of like singlehood or where you're at now is really important because again with that bypassing you don't want to just you might miss something along the way and throw you right back in that karmic cycle it feels kind of really important to just stay put with where you're at finish that healing journey so you can get off that karmic cycle we're going to end this karmic loop so you can transcend to a new level of consciousness so just Wherever you're at, just be grateful, be happy. Everything's happening right where it's supposed to be, and you are exactly right where you're supposed to be. There's a reason they wanted me to use the word space is because um, they're still lining some stuff up for you. So at least over the next three months, just hang put because I'm telling you there's greater things coming in, and uh, we have free will. So you don't want to like, kind of like mix up with that um, timeline because they're they're laying out a really good path for you, Okay. All right, Scorpio, we'll wrap up your reading right there. All right, so my water signs, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys got anything out of this reading, do me a favor with that thumbs up button. This way I know you got something that resonated. If you guys haven't any subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And there's a bell too. You want to hit the bell and turn on all notifications because I do daily videos. And I do want you guys to miss out on any upcoming messages. The next message just might be the message that you need to hear today. All right, so my water signs, till next time, be blessed.